Hi guys. It has actually turned into a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this now beautiful Thursday. And it is September 16th, 2021, the final wind down of the summer of 2021. And uh, so last Thursday I did an oilprice.com roundup and and I've been toying around with the idea of making uh, Thursday my oilprice.com roundup. So I started to do that, guys, but I just don't have my heart in these big geopolitical uh, stories. Taxes my brain too much, so we're just going to have a very straight, simple... Who's that? Nah. Is that a bear? Is it a bear or is it attack a Anyway, Sancho's off to attack a bear. So uh, I'm just going to do this with myself. So anyway, since I don't have it in me to uh, wade into the geopolitics of the global oil market, we're simply going to take a peek into Mad Max from Rolling Stone magazine. We're just going to get a little snapshot of, of Mad Max unfolding on this planet and of course anyone who's been to portland oregon this year knows where mad max is shaping up take it away rolling stone this is robert evans <coughs> from uh rolling stone and i'm going to put the link to this article i'm just going to read the first half of it or so and you can take it from here portland oregon is ground zero for violent culture war clashes and it's spreading. <coughs> Come here, Sancho. Nope. You say, Bob, I'm not coming back. I'm not going to join you in this rant today. Okay. Well, Sancho Panza has no interest in uh, Mad Max unfolding in Portland, Oregon. So what does Rolling Stone have to say? <clears throat> All right. If you want a vision of our nation's future, you can find it. <coughs> you can find it today. <coughs> if you want a vision of our nature, <coughs> of our nation's future, you can find it in the mace-soaked streets <coughs> of Portland, Oregon. The City of Roses put it all on display on a recent Sunday in August when the Proud Boys, an extremist group whose purpose, according to their founder, is to do violence to their political enemies, gathered in northeast Portland. Downtown, hundreds of left-wing demonstrators gathered in anticipation of the Proud Boys' arrival. Things got ugly at both sites. In the northeast, the Proud Boys flipped a van, and beat a man bloody while he sat in a parked truck. There were paintball gunfights and, of course, mace. Yes, downtown, one right-wing agitator allegedly fired a handgun into a crowd of anti-fascists, at least one of whom returned fire. Prior to the rally, Mayor Ted Wheeler had advised his citizens to, quote, choose love, choose love. After the shooting, local activists responded with a slogan of their own, choose level four, level four body armor, that is, yes. So uh, the question in Portland, Oregon, and more and more on the question of the 21st century, choose love or choose level four body armor. Uh, each day that more and more people are switching to the level four body armor choice. So if you got love on one side and body armor on the other. All right. Clashes are increasingly part of daily life in Portland, a city that, by the looks of it, 
is the nation's leader in the per capita ownership of body armor and gas masks. But while it would be easy to just write this off as Portland being Portland, a city George H.W. Bush nicknamed Little Beirut, that would be a mistake. <clears throat> the bloody tactics work workshopped in Portland have already cropped up around the country from Charlottesville to anti-mask protest to January 6th. The Proud Boys have no intention of going away. Their critics have no intention of backing down and where this ends is anybody's guess. As U.S. Representative and far-right extremist Paul Gosar put it at an Oath Keeper gathering when asked about a potential second Civil War, quote, we are in it. We just haven't started shooting each other yet. Well, uh, I'm not quite sure that's true. I, I, I think there's already been several casualties in the Second Civil War. Thank you, you right wing, whatever. We are already in the Second Civil War. All right. Xander Almeida has been a member of the Multnomah County. That's where Portland is, Multnomah County Republican Party since 2008, Almeida first became aware of the influence militant groups had on the local Republican Party in 2017 when he received an email warning him about Antifa threats to a planned parade, quote, and the uh, Republican uh, party said, don't worry, we will get the three percenters out. Yeah, Almeida tells Rolling Stone, he provided the, uh, the official notes from the 2017 meeting, which includes a proposed leg legislation that the local Republican Party may utilize volunteers from the Oregon three percenters, the Oath Keepers, and other what they call security groups and the resolution passed. Uh, so far at least, none of their meetings have ever been attacked by anti-fascist, but the local Republicans remain deeply worried about the possibility of such an assault. In May of this year, they hired a Proud Boy affiliate to provide security at a meeting where they voted to recall party chair Stephen Lloyd. The recall petition slammed Lloyd for calling for more diversity within the party and alleged that his attempts to make meetings more open to the public put local Republicans at risk from Rose City Antifa the oldest named Antifa organization in the United States. Uh, for his part, Almeida now protests with Portland anti-fascists, including Rose City Antifa, against the Proud Boys and other anti-democratic extremists. <laughs> he is still a registered Republican, but says he has felt less and less conservative in recent years. Uh, when he met, when we met on August 22nd, he wore a helmet, motorcycle pads, and a respirator. Yes. Since it is rare for right-wing militants to face severe penalties for engaging in violence, many have come to see Portland as a proving ground and a place where they can test tactics in a friendly climate. 
I love this guy, Tusi Tala, nicknamed Tiny Toisi. Tiny Toisi, a notorious brawler who has been affiliated with both the Proud Boys and Patriot Prayer, was jailed last year for assaulting an anti-fascist bystander. He was legally prohibited from attending protests when he went to an August 22nd street fight. Police took no action. When we reached out to the Portland Police Bureau for comment, a spokesman responded that it was the court's duty to monitor someone's actions before trial, not the cops. Yes, not the cops. <clears throat> Uh, in 2019, Sean Keeler, 23, was killed outside a bar popular with local leftists, and uh, Portland police have been slow to provide any information on their investigation into his murder. Um, this stands in stark contrast to how law enforcement responded to the shooting death of right-wing protester Jan J. Danielson by anti-fascist Michael Reinhall in late August of 2020. After that shooting, Reinhall went into hiding. He was tracked down and killed by U.S. Marshals <clears throat> a week later. President Trump bragged about this, quote, <coughs> they knew who he was. They didn't want to arrest him. Fifteen minutes later, that ended, meaning uh, when U.S. Marshals just shot and killed, uh, you know, these U.S. Marshals that Trump had sent in for all intents and purposes, just hunted him down and killed him. Uh, without bothering to arrest him and read him his rights. Um, so apparently, so this Rolling Stone reporter, you know, is hanging out at a lot of the, you know, bringing some firsthand reports of, of Mad Max uh, un, unrolling in Portland, Oregon. So let's go to the night of August 8th after an event by anti-mask religious leader Sean Foyt protesters clashed in the streets with right-wing protesters firing paintball guns from trucks and left-wing counter-protesters fighting back fireworks and mace fighting back with fireworks and mace as soon as the dust had cleared Local white nationalist Haley Adams started drumming up interest for an event on August 22nd. Uh, this had initially been planned by Aldra Price, the leader of a pro-police Facebook group with 20,000 followers. Price billed August 22nd as a chance for patriots to come together to offer hope and inspiration. Ahead of that uh, August 22nd event, Mayor Wheeler held his Choose Love, Choose Love event, a small digital press conference where city leaders addressed public fears over the impending rally. <clears throat> Police Chief, Chief Chuck Lovell announced I guess in the Choose Love event, that his department would not take any action to intervene in assaults. Quoting the police chief of Portland, people should not necessarily expect to see the police standing in the middle of the crowd trying to keep people apart. People need to keep themselves apart and avoid physical confrontation. So that is how the cops are. They don't expect the cops to come to your rescue in the middle of a riot. Um, 
the gathering was advertised under a variety of names, but on the day of the event, the event it was most prominently billed as a, quote, free our political prisoners rally. As my team and I approached the event, we saw two four-man teams armed with rifles and handguns patrolling the parking lot where the event was being held. Nearby were four middle-aged counter-protesters. They carried signs and wore normal street clothes. So anyway, the rest of this article is basically uh, just describing what went down on August uh, 22nd. Uh, while we talked, we were approached by a right-wing live streamer who began loudly questioning us. This caused a swarm of Proud Boys and other far-right activists to descend. Two of them, armed with bats and mace, pushed past the counter-protesters and toward me. One man got right up in my face and asked if I wanted to fight. And then, of course, <clears throat> uh... On the other side, several anti-fascist medics dressed in black and wearing body armor walked over and put themselves between the unarmored counter-protesters and the Proud Boys. Another activist pulled his Toyota Tacoma up to the side of the gathering which had spilled out into the street to block traffic so that no one got hit. My team and I eventually pulled back to a nearby gas station. Good guys, guys. so anyway, it goes on and on from here. Uh, you can fill in the blanks. But uh, anybody say, you know, claiming uh, that, that all these doomers talking about Mad Max, at Portland, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, uh, in, in, in the year 2021, uh, acting like that uh, Adolf Hitler, a new Hitler, could never rise again uh, on this planet. The new Hitler uh, is probably already here, uh, right here in the good old U.S. of A. But anyway, uh, thank you, Rolling Stone. And uh, you can go on the link and finish this out for yourself. But guys, I'm going to get out there and en enjoy my little flower power here at Bugs in a Jar Farm waiting for Mad Max to descend on the Finger Lakes of New York. I will keep you apprised and I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy Mad Max while you still can. My guys.